Make sure your name is on it. In a public school classroom. You are going to walk around. You're going to read the um, summary. You're going to read the question. On Chicago's far south side. Why do you think he was so concerned over where Jackie was staying? Students are learning about a man from the pages of history. When the Smith writes to Branch Ricky, letting him know that he was Whose name also happens to be written on the building. We've been working on the, what we've been working on all week, which is Wendell Smith for Black History Month, of course. And he's the, and our school's named after him, so. <laughs> Wendell Smith Elementary in the Roseland neighborhood. If your mind can't conceive it, then you can't achieve it. That's what we kind of bark with our, on our kids every day. And Wendell Smith Park nearby are two lasting monuments to the trailblazing WGN sports anchor and pioneering baseball writer who is as responsible for the integration of baseball as Jackie Robinson himself. Everyone remembers the name Jackie Robinson, but Wendell Smith was, is a tremendous story that people need to know much, much more about. From 1964 until his death in 1972, Smith was WGN's utility player. He was a full-fledged journalist. He was a solid gatherer of facts. He could write well, and he was a real expert uh, interviewer. What will you do about this urge that you have to start fires? I'll see you, doctor. In baseball terms, I mean, he was the equivalent of a 5 tool guy. Uh, we're looking at a photograph of Wendell Smith and Joe Lewis that was uh, most likely taken at the uh, offices of the Pittsburgh Courier. Author Michael Marsh wrote the introduction to the Wendell Smith Reader. Jim, now you set the world record for the mile in 351.3. Uh, uh, what do you think it'll take to win it in the Olympics? While at WGN, Smith was as comfortable talking about sports. Can you come up here and make this hockey club? Well, let's hope so. It's going to be tough, I know it is. As he was talking about civil rights. Amazingly, few Negroes hired in proportion. One chain store has 12,000 employees and a mere 400 Negroes. He occasionally handled breaking news. Threatened all of the children in the auditorium. and now he uh, had a weapon. He was armed, yes. They didn't know that at first, of course. He let them know very soon that he had a weapon. He, <clears throat> he threatened uh, the children, told them to stay where they were. There was a teacher on duty. He shot at this teacher and just barely missed him. And uh, then I think he shot two more times. But his career was all about breaking barriers. He wrote article after article suggesting to Major League Baseball, urging Major League Baseball to integrate its game, not just for the opportunities for African-Americans, but for the game itself, to improve the game itself. DePaul University professor Fred Mitchell was the Chicago Tribune's first black reporter and says Wendell Smith's work at the Pittsburgh Courier helped spur baseball's integration. If it's not for Wendell Smith, then there's probably not going to be a Jackie Robinson. In many ways, the story of baseball's integration could be traced to a diamond in Detroit in 1932. Smith was an 18-year-old pitcher in a playoff game. He threw a shutout masterpiece. His team won one to nothing in extra innings. Afterwards, a scout for the Detroit Tigers signed the losing pitcher, who was white, saying he couldn't sign Smith because he was black. He told me how he cried. He went home and he cried and he said that if he was determined that if he had ever did anything else in his life, Negroes were gonna play in the major leagues. From that moment, Smith devoted himself to challenging baseball's racial barriers he found the pen would be mightier than the bat. Wendell Smith took three uh, black baseball players to Boston for a tryout with the Boston Red Sox. Jackie Robinson was one of those players. I'm gonna do it. He says that tryout led to a meeting with Brooklyn Dodgers general manager, Branch Rickey. I'm gonna bring a Negro ball player to the Brooklyn Dodgers. Branch Rickey asked Wendell Smith if any of those ball players could play in the major leagues. And Smith recommended Jackie Robinson. Jackie Robinson. Wendell Smith. Pittsburgh Courier. Smith's critical role was memorialized in the film 42. I think Branch Rickey must have trusted Wendell Smith's judgment. I want a player who's got the guts not to fight back. Smith's recommendation carried such weight that the team not only signed Robinson, but also asked Smith to be Robinson's roommate on the road during his rookie year of 1947. 
Wendell Smith was a very good guy for Robertson because Jackie Robertson had a big temper and uh, Wendell Smith kind of cooled him off and Wendell Smith was a great choice to be with Jackie Robertson at that time. While Robinson was dealing with racism on the field, Smith was dealing with discrimination everywhere else. He was denied access to the press box and denied membership in the Baseball Writers Association. The fact that it showed Wendell Smith covering a baseball game. Robinson rounds third. From the stands because he was not admitted to the press box. Headed for home, sweet home. Smith served as the ghostwriter of Robinson's 1948 autobiography, Jackie Robinson, My Own Story, as told to Wendell Smith. People have to know that uh, it, it takes more than one person for something like that, so monumental, to happen. He wrote columns for the Sun-Times from this pink royal typewriter in his Southside home office, and in 1964, he started at WGN-TV with the full support of Jack Brickhouse, becoming the first black person ever on air at the station. WGN uh, was one of the first stations to have regular participation by a, a minority. Floyd Brown was an early permanent on-air fixture of WGN News. WGN found its staff changing as more women and minorities entered broadcasting. Well, those funds go to the local school board. And attending to some of the problems that confront the families of low and moderate income in the country. Smith then became the sports anchor for the station's 10 o'clock news broadcast. In 1965, WGN produced a special examining the first 10 years of Mayor Richard J. Daley's administration. Smith was the reporter who interviewed Daley. Riding public and mass transportation, surely we needed that same year, Smith produced a show called Let Freedom Ring about the advancements made by blacks in Chicago. Located at 47th and State Streets, DeSable High has an enrollment of some 4,000 students. Here, the great-grandchildren of field workers are preparing themselves to become the doctors, lawyers, and teachers of tomorrow. In point of fact, every branch of the transportation industry provides a source of job opportunities for Negro workers. He reported extensively on the intersection of sports and society. Most of all, one of the people here in Chicago have all been very nice to me. He once questioned Jerry Lucas of the NBA's Cincinnati Royals about tension with his black teammate, Oscar Robertson. It has been said that you and Oscar Robinson are not the most friendly people in the world. Is that true? No, it is not true. This has been said, of course, for six years. Oscar and I have played together for six years. We get along very well. Coach Hallis is very, very high on him, Wendell. He reported on the Bears. It's a shame that we're 0-2. And the Bulls. Dick, your uh, Chicago Bulls have been training for three weeks now. Are they in shape, and how are your new men doing? Well, we've been at it uh, for, for quite some time. We've played uh, eight exhibition games. I, I think we're in shape, uh, and I, I hope that we're ready. He also interviewed baseball legends like Stan Musial. Which clubs do you think are going to be pushing you again? What I would say offhand at the uh, San Francisco Giants and... And Joe DiMaggio. Are you going to spring training and uh, help out on the hitting? Wendell, I'll be there again this year. I was very impressed that he was able to make the transition from print to broadcast. Where did they uh, cut you? On the side of the arm. It's not easy because you have to be able to, uh, you know, appear natural on television. Uh, you have to be able to adjust your writing style. Has the department ever considered uh, arming the firemen? Wendell Smith was called the best of his generation in the anthology Black Writers, Black Baseball. I came to spring training in perhaps the worst condition that I'd ever been in. In October of 1972, he wrote Jackie Robinson's obituary. One month later, he died of cancer. He was just 58 years old. Wendell Smith started his writing career at $17 a week. He was posthumously inducted into the Baseball Hall of Fame, an honor his wife, Wyanella, accepted on his behalf. And so for Wendell, I say thank you. Make sure you get something written on your sticky note. And back at Wendell Smith Elementary, that's part of the lesson of his life. The white players moved to a different hotel. Changing the game requires some to make history. I think it's amazing how one person 
How one person can change history. Others to write it, and the rest of us to learn it. How versatile, with such a strong voice, and how blessed mm -hmm. we were uh, to have his presence here at WGN. Great part of history. Mm -hmm. Well, Smith was also the first black president of the Chicago Press Club. And next week on WGN at 75, Mike will revisit another WGN pioneer, the father of daytime talk TV, Phil Donahue. And we will have special coverage every Thursday night. Remember that through April on the WGN News at 9 right here. There's also a special section of our website devoted to stories about the 75th anniversary. You can read more at WGNTV.com slash 75.